Hi, this is Jose Luis and welcome to this new video where I'm going to teach you how to model a parametric pearl necklace. And what does that mean? It means that starting off from the shape of some curve and then adding as one of the parameters the amount of pearls in a necklace, we're going to create a definition that is going to generate and populate an amount of pearls equal to whatever number we choose parametrically on top of that geometry. This could be used for visualization, it could be used for jewelry design, it could be used for many things. But the idea is that we're going to learn how to model geometry that is bound numerically to each other based on the relationships of, um, of the elements in this, in this modeling environment. I'm also going to take this chance, that is the first exercise on this series, to take a closer look at how do we in general plan exercises and how do we plan our algorithmic modeling um, uh, access, whatever we want to do parametrically. Okay, so shall we get hands on? Let's take a look at that. Wonderful. So let's get started. So the first thing that I would like to do is if we're going to, because this is the first video on the series of exercises, I would like to step back a little bit and then encourage you to have an attitude before you do any kind of parametric modeling whatsoever. I would like to invite you to think through the problem before you actually start implementing anything on dropping any component. Because I have found that thinking through the problem and setting yourself a plan, both conceptually and maybe geometrically, if you will, setting yourself a plan of how do you actually plan to tackle the problem is typically very helpful. Whether if you end up pursuing that particular path or you actually detour because of your lack of experience or because you're still learning the tool, whatever, it's not important, but what's important is to think through the problem and to make sure that you have a good sense of what things you work, you're working with and how you may achieve the solution that you want to achieve. So in this case, for example, we are trying to design a pearl necklace. And let's imagine that this is for some kind of visualization exercise. We're gonna make a rendering out of this, okay? So one of the things that is super important and very useful is to first, think what are your input parameters going to be? What data are you going to start working with as, as in the origin? And then which data you're going to have as input parameters to work through in your algorithmic process. Typically, for example, if we're designing a pearl necklace, one of the inputs might be the actual thread of the necklace, okay? And, um, and another input may actually be, for example, the amount of pearls that we might have. So for example, that's going to be, I'm going to call that N, all right? So that could be one parameter. I could choose how much is that, and that could vary. That could be 10, 12, that could be a slider, it doesn't matter. But it will be one of our input parameters, the things that we decide to change, right? Now, my question here would be, can we also choose the diameter of the pearl? Is that a possibility? Well, it turns out that if I have this length, if I have this curve that I know that I have in right now that I have generated parametrically, and I know how many pearls I want to put in that thread, then it turns out that I don't have the freedom to choose the diameter of the necklace of the, of the pearls. I don't have that freedom because it turns out that imagining that they're going to be next to each other, right? Then an approximation to the size of those pearls will be that the diameter of those pearls should then be roughly equal to the overall length of the curve, so that would be L, divided by the actual amount of pearls that we have. So that's going to be N. So it turns out that D it's not a free variable that you can use, that I can use in my definition. It's not a parameter. It's going to be parametrically bound to two things that are parameters to me, the curve and therefore its length and the amount of pearls that I have, like here, all right? So you see, it's now breaking this up starts giving me some insights on what I can choose and what I cannot. And now, how do I go about this? Well, maybe, for example, one thing that I could do to generate this would be, if I have this curve, maybe I can do a process where I can divide 
this curve in equal length segments. How many? Well, equal to the amount of pearls that I want in my, in my, in my necklace. All right. And then once I have that, I can calculate the diameter of the spheres. And then I can just place spheres with that diameter centered on each one of those points. All right. And if I do that, then that could be a good start for my parametrically defined uh, per necklace. Okay. So this is going to be super easy to implement. Let's go back to Grasshopper and take a look at how to do this. Back in Grasshopper, this is going to be a piece of cake. So you'll see. First of all, we want to have the curve. We want to have the curve that is going to be the thread. So uh, we could generate that parametrically. But as I said in previous videos, for some things, it's actually much nicer to have the tangibility to be able to touch and move things around in Rhino more than like moving sliders, whatever. So I'm actually going to just draw a curve here in Rhino. So for example, this is going to be the curve that I'm going to use as an input for my definition. And it's going to be, uh, I'm actually going to make it like 3D. So I'm going to give it some volume here and some volume here. So that is not entirely planar. And I'm going to double click here, type curve, <clears throat> right click, set one curve here. And then I'm going to just place some bifocals here for those of you who might be not icon people, which I think you should rethink your icon life, but whatever. Um, I embrace all kinds of visual representations. <laughs> so I have the curve. And remember that when doing exercises and modeling, it's very, very useful to have a panel always handy so that you can keep plugging things in and see visually what's happening inside the components. I have the one curve. Okay, so that's going to be one of my inputs. The other input is going to be the number of pearls. So for that, I'm just going to use a slider that I'm going to right click edit. I'm going to make sure that it's an integer because I don't want to have 2.3 pearls. That doesn't really make much sense. So I cannot have decimal part. The minimum is going to be number two because I don't want to have less than two pearls and the maximum can be whatever, a thousand. It doesn't really matter. Okay. And then I'm just going to crank this up, for example, to the value of 10. So this is going to be the number of pearls, for example. And you know how I like a lot to have all my inputs grouped here on the left hand side. This is called inputs. Okay, and then have everything cleared. I'm going to just keep 100 here so that it's a bit more, it's a bit easier to move this around. Okay, wonderful. So what is the next thing that I need to do? First, as I showed in my diagram, I need to subdivide my curve in uh, an amount of points, which is equal to how many ner how many pearls do I have? So in order to do that, how do I subdivide a curve? Well, this is something you're going to have to start doing your own, which is going through the library of components and then just figuring out, reading through components and finding the ones that might help you do certain operations. So if I want to subdivide a curve into points, I wonder if components to do this would be either in the curves family or in the points family. I probably want to go to the curves family and you can see that there's this, there's a whole category called divisions here that gives you many options to do different divisions for curves. And if I say divide curve into equal length segments, I think this is one that is probably going to give us good results. As usual, the first thing that we do whenever we drop a new component that we have never seen before is take a look at the inputs and the outputs. The input is the curve that I want to divide, how many numbers of segments I'm going to be dividing in, and whether if I want to split at the kinks or not. I'm not sure what that means, but uh, I can still try with. And then this is going to be the division points. This is going to be the tangent vectors at dot division, which I don't think I'm going to be using, but uh, it's okay to, uh, to have. And T is going to be the parameter values at the division points. Remember when we spoke about nurse geometry, we spoke about the parameter being that relative position that we can situate ourselves along curves inside of the domain of the curve. So T is going to be that value for each one of these points. So I'm just going to plug in here the curve 
and I'm going to plug in here the number of pearls. Actually, if you read carefully, it says here the number of segments that I want to divide. And here I am saying the number of pearls. So if I actually crank it this down to two segments, you see that I actually get three points. It's not exact, okay? It's not perfect. So this should be more like number of segments, but just doesn't really make sense. So we could actually say, well, maybe to be more precise, what I want is if I want three pearls, what I need is to divide in two segments. So what I will need to do is, and I'm going to use an expression here, I will need to take whatever you give me minus one. Remember that I just happen to like expressions better for, for computation, you see? And now this is going to be much, much cleaner. Remember to read carefully always the expression. This is number of segments, not the number of pearls. So now I have number of pearls is going to be 10 and I have exactly 10 pearls here. And then the only thing that I need to do now is I just need to place on top of these, I need to place spheres, which I can find under surfaces, primitives, spheres. I can place spheres on the points and let me see the points here. Yes, so all the points from the divide curve, you can see that I have a collection of <clears throat> 10 points, which are also the ones that I can see if I click here, I can see the 10 points. If I use those 10 points as the centers for the spheres, you can see that now I have the pearls, right? And that if I can increase more or less, and I can have more or less pearls on my necklace, which is kind of nice, right? However, <clears throat> the problem is that the radius for these pearls is always one, because that's the default in the component. So as we saw before on our diagram, it turns out that um, it turns out that in order to make this happen, in order to make this happen correctly, what we need to do is we need to calculate the diameter of each one of the pearls dynamically. We need to calculate it parametrically using data in our definition. So how do we do that? So we're going to do, I'm going to create another expression. You know how I like expressions better than um, form uh, than, than normal uh, operators. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, n is going to be the number of inputs. Uh, <clears throat> and then L, capital L is going to be the length of the curve. And you, if you remember from our diagram before, if you, oops, oh, sorry, I was, <laughs> I didn't change my screen. So if you remember here, um, from this diagram, we have the diameter is going to be equal to the length divided by the number of pearls. So if I now create an expression component and I replace, let me do that again. I'm going to create expression component and this is going to be the length of the curve and this is going to be the number of pearls, all right? So now what I need to do here is that the diameter is going to be L divided by N. And I need to plug in here the number of pearls. So that's going to be N. And you might feel inclined to connect the curve here, but that is not going to work, right? Because uh, it turns out that the curve, you cannot plug here on L something that is expecting a number to work with, you cannot plug in a curve. The expression component cannot automatically decide that if you give it a curve, what you're actually meaning is the length of that curve. So what you need to do first is using some kind of calculation, figure out the length of that curve. Thankfully, Grasshopper gives us components that can do that very easily. So for example, if I go to curve, you can see there is a full tab called analysis that can give us information, a lot of information about curves in general. One of them here is the length of a curve. So it literally takes a curve and it measures the length. If I place that here, the input component is the curve you want to measure and L is the length of that curve as a number. So I can just plug that in here. Let me use a panel to make sure that this is working well. Yes, the length is 89 units of whatever. And then here, 
I'm just going to place that here under L. Now, it turns out that the result is that each one of these is four units long, four units in diameter. So if I plug this in here, you can see that now, oh, we're getting close, but not quite. What is going on? If I go to the top view, you can see that actually, most of the spheres are actually overlapping with the center of the other spheres. You see that? That is because the what I have calculated here is the diameter. But what the sphere component is asking me is for the radius. You see? So um, it's very important, as I said before, to always read the inputs carefully so that we know what to do. So how can we calculate the radius then? Well, the radius is just half the diameter, right? So I can calculate, I can change the expression and say I want to divide length by 2 times n. Or whatever the result of this was, I just want to multiply it for it by 0 0.5. Both of them work well. Okay? And if I do that, now you can see that the necklace, the pearls are fitting well with each other. And look at this is the nicest thing. If I increase the number, you can see how the diameter is slowly decreasing because they're parametrically related. Whereas if I increase the number, then you see that everything adjusts accordingly. And if I change now, if I move one of the points of the curve, and if I stretch the curve a lot, you see how all the, 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 the pearls just increase in size to adapt to the new geometry. Okay? So literally, this is the magic of parametric modeling just by using, just by making sure that we have the right information and that everything is parametrically related to each other, then we can create complex relationships of modeling form um, between, between different geometry types. Um, now, a quick footprint to this exercise. I have taken a many shortcuts here because, uh, for example, if you actually look carefully at what's going on here, you cannot really calculate the diameter of the necklace just by subdividing the length by the... Because if you look carefully, you can see that sometimes you're going to go into get this situation where, where the curvature is very pronounced, the things, the necklaces, the pearls are overlapping, whereas when it's not, then you're going to have a gap between them. And similarly here, you have some overlaps and here you have some gaps. This is because the process that we have followed does not really take into consideration perfect tangency. Okay? Um, so, and, and that in order to do that, we would have to use other components here, like for example, divide distance and follow a different logic. So this was just for the, sum, for the sake of um, simpl oversimplifying the process, but if you actually want to see how this works, we have a geometry, we have an algorithmic modeling challenge on pearl necklaces, which is somewhere here. This one, if you're actually interested in that, make sure you check our algorithmic modeling challenge 3.1, 3.2, where do we improve that and we make things perfectly tangent. And if you are maybe at that point in your life, you can see the exact same implementation using C sharp, uh, which is which you got here. So that was it. Thank you very much. And let's move on to the next exercise in this series. Um, and if you like this, like the video, maybe subscribe. I don't know. Thank you. See you in the next video.